Hi guys, my name is Laura and today I will be doing a review of the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation. So if you'd like to see my thoughts, then just keep watching. Also, if you haven't already, then definitely press that subscribe button down below because I upload videos every single week. Okay, so that was my sheep. I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> Let's quickly talk about the packaging. This is what the packaging looks like. It looks like a little pill. I think it's so cute. It's got a black lid and then a frosted glass packaging where you can see the fluid on the inside. You lift off the black lid and there is a silver cap inside and that is where you can twist off the applicator. So this is how you can apply the foundation with that little ball spatula thing, which to be honest is not the most hygienic. My favorite packaging is pumps. So it's probably not the most hygienic, but that's what we've got to work with today. I have the shade 52 Honey Light, which is on my face at the moment. I also own 58 Honey Deep, which is where I have a super deep tan on. And then I also have the number 46 Golden Deep. So this foundation in Australia retails for 76 Australian dollars and I'm not too sure how how much it retails for online, but that's how much it is in Australia It does come in this box here as with most Marc Jacobs packaging it kind of looks like this Yeah on the back of the box. It says instant results all day weightless finish Beyond full coverage and honestly, I cannot agree with that more a lot of the times I don't agree with the claims on the back, but with this foundation. Oh Lord it is so ridiculously full coverage. I've never come across such a full coverage foundation in my life that has been so lightweight. Like, oh my goodness, it's ridiculous. Like, I do, like, a few dots using that spatula thing or that, like, little wand thing. I just do a few dots all over my face and then I blend it in with a kabuki brush. Not a kabuki brush, a um, stippling brush. And seriously, it leaves me with such a thin layer but such intense coverage. I'm just like, oh my god like every time i'm just blown away and it lasts all day all day like like i wore this foundation when i went to um some rock pools up in the blue mountains with fran it was the hottest day that month it was scorching hot i think my um little temperature thing in my car said it was like 40 degrees celsius so that's really hot and my foundation was mint. Mind you, I was in the water, I was sweating. We had to walk like a kilometre just to get to the rock pool and a kilometre back. That was downhill and uphill. It was intense and my makeup still stayed on and it was flawless by the end of the day. I put it on and I think maybe 10 o'clock and I didn't check my makeup until 10 o'clock at night and it still lasted all day. This foundation doesn't have doesn't have any SPF in it. I'm being so tongue tied. This foundation doesn't have any SPF in it. So if you are in the sun a lot, then definitely bear in mind to put on a UV base underneath, just so your skin is protected from the sun. In the package, you do get 22 mil, so that's 0.75 fluid ounces. So it is less than a standard foundation, but honestly, it will last you longer than a standard foundation. Like with a normal foundation, I'll use two to three pumps depending on the foundation. Here, I'm probably not even using an equivalent to a pump. It's ridiculous. I must say that if you are going to wear this foundation, you need to moisturize your skin. Even if you have oily skin, you need to moisturize your skin. I have normal combination skin, and I find the best is if I apply a heavy moisturizer. So say, for example, the Embryolisse La Re I'm getting so done done. La Cream Concentrate, I think that's an amazing one. Or even just applying your normal moisturizer, then applying a hydrating primer. Um, in the line, they do have a primer, which I haven't used yet, which I really should at some stage. I only just picked it up. I have been using the Too Faced Hangover RX Primer underneath this foundation a lot, and it does go on amazingly with that primer. Biggest tip is to moisturize your skin and probably use a hydrating primer because seriously, this is very matte. Like it's a very, very matte foundation, not to the point where you look dry and crusty. I would personally say to set your foundation with a powder just because I normally do that anyway. I haven't really used this foundation without setting it first, so I can only give you my experience based on if I set it with powder. So I do have normal combination skin. I have a very, very oily T-zone where foundation normally doesn't stick for the whole day. But with this foundation, for some weird reason, it just does. I don't know how, but I'm not complaining. I'm obsessed. I love how it lasts all day, like all day, no word of a lie. And it just, it still looks flawless. I don't know how. 
I don't know how. There are a lot of shades, which is really, really good, but they're always sold out. Like, what? Why? Um, I really do like this foundation on its own, and I really like it as a mixer as well. I feel like it mixes amazingly to darken or lighten or just add coverage to a foundation. So I really like that aspect as well. Overall, it is honestly a favorite foundation of mine. And that is a very big thing to say because I have a lot of foundations and I do love a lot of foundations. Like you're talking to somebody who I think owns at least a hundred foundations, which is ridiculous. I love foundation. Overall, this is an amazing foundation if you want full coverage. You cannot just get light coverage with this foundation. There's no such thing as light coverage with this foundation. You could maybe try mixing this in with, say, a tinted moisturizer or maybe some moisturizer and maybe lighten it that way if you want less coverage. But for me, if you just apply it directly to your face, you will get full coverage. I must say also before I go, if you are going to be applying this foundation, I wouldn't be using a beauty blender. I don't find it applies that well through beauty blender, at least in my experience, um, or a flat top kabuki brush. I don't think they work very well. The best way for me is to use a stippling brush. And although like you'd think a stippling brush reduces the coverage, this is so pigmented that it doesn't reduce any coverage. It's ridiculous. But yeah, I use a stippling brush. Not always this one. I have one from Real Techniques. This one's from Eco Tools. Yeah. Overall, I really like this foundation. The packaging is probably the one thing that I don't like about it, just because they could have easily put a pump. Like, the primer that's in the line comes with a pump. Why couldn't the foundation, you know what I mean? Just to keep things a little bit more sanitary, but it doesn't really affect the product itself and how it performs. But overall, I love this foundation. Don't get me wrong, it's expensive AF. It's almost $80. But seriously, the results and how little product you need and how long it lasts outweighs all of that. I love it so much. I haven't found anything like it before and I am honestly obsessed. Obsessed. <laughs> so yeah, I hope this review helped you guys. I really do like this foundation and bear in mind, I have tried a lot of foundations. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please remember to like and subscribe. I upload new videos every single week. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.